Do you want free fire tips to help you win more in every single game mode? Well, <laughs> you came to the right place. I've been working with Full Frontage to do exactly that in this video, and he is way better at the game than I am, so you know that these tips are solid. Let's start with 11 Battle Royale tips, and then we'll cover Clash Squad. Tip number one is to loot as much as possible. Now, this might sound like a no-brainer, okay, but I see people going for fights instead of loot all the time. Even if you already have your favorite weapon, it's a good idea to continue going for loot. In Lone Wolf and Clash Squad, every single weapon comes with maxed out attachments, but in Battle Royale, you have have to find better attachments and the only way you're going to reduce recoil or increase your scoping distance or increase the size of your clip is to loot okay if you're lucky you might even find upgrade chips for your guns to make them better and then of course you're gonna find better vests and helmets or even toolboxes that can be used to upgrade your armor now if you're really confident in your ability to fight you could drop into high loot spots or even really popular spots like peak and bermuda okay but you're more likely to face other players right off the bat so that might not be the best option if you're a beginner unless of course you don't really care about winning you just want to drop in there and have some fun and then in that case go ahead there's no shame in having fun right? Gotta get the booyahs! Now, if you're somewhat new to the game like me, it's a good idea to drop in less populated areas or near the edge of the map while you try and figure out what loot you like or like which weapons and stuff like that. And that's going to help you be more prepared when you run into other players. There is no shame in letting your opponents take each other out so that you can secure a higher placement. However, if you don't enjoy looting and running around the map, this might obviously not be the most fun. Tip number two, pick up those orange upgraded weapons. Every now and then you'll actually find upgraded versions of the weapons. In a recent in tier list video I did, they were called XYZ modifications, but now they're called Roman numeral 1, 2, and 3. And these show up as orange in your weapon slots and come with improved reload speeds or accuracy or better rate of fire and other improvements, which makes them a must use if you happen to find them. You can even find upgrade cards to use on a gun that you like to make it orange. My third tip is to avoid staying in the same place if you can not only so you're actually able to like get more loot but staying in the same place makes you a very easy target if someone happens to know where you are okay even if you're like in the middle of a, a sustained fight and you're trying to fight each other don't stand in the same place okay you want to rotate around the map and use cover as you do so that you can get better advantage points now if your whole goal is to just travel to a specific location you can open up your mini map and tag those locations which is going to make it sure that you like don't actually lose sight of where you want it to go over long distances as well now jumping while you're running will also help try to prevent any enemies from one tapping you with an instant headshot death okay just try to be aware of where you hear gunfire and where the zone is shrinking while you move around and although it is tempting to grab a vehicle most of them are very loud which makes you an easy target which is why they're not really recommended after the third shrink zone even then you have to be pretty careful my third tip grab the glue walls and use them I'm probably gonna say this in every video because it is really important and will give you a big advantage over your importance I'll be the first to admit that I am still learning how to use them quickly but you're only going to get better with practice and setting your grenades to double slot will actually make it so that you can have a dedicated place for your glue walls which is a huge help this can be done in the settings section of your game tip number five is to get the high ground in all of your fights the higher you are the easier it is for you to shoot over enemy glue walls and also the further you can throw grenades and most of the time all you need to do if you need to like get a little bit of cover is just crouch and fall back a little bit and then all of a sudden they can't hit you it also gives you much better vision of the map and where your enemies are which can help you in a lot more matches my sixth tip is to bring at least one character ability for movement and another for health. Other than that, it really comes down to play style and personal choice. Well, actually, there are some abilities that are just better, <laughs> but at least one of each of these are going to be helpful in Battle Royale. If you do happen to forget your character abilities, they are shown above the EP bar with these like little icons. You can even tap and hold on those icons to see what your abilities are if you like jump into a match and weren't paying attention. Or if you're still learning the game, you want to figure them out. You can even tell if a passive ability is activated because it will glow above Above the EP bar while that ability is in effect. Now on top of character abilities, you want to make sure that you have pets that have useful abilities as well. If you're not sure which pet and character abilities are the best to use, I recommend watching my video where I cover the best character and pet abilities in the game. Now on top of picking the best characters that you want for each match, you also want to swap your loadout. Now in solo mode, it really depends on the play style for the loadout that you're going to have, okay? For the survival section, bonfires can help you if you like to play a little bit more aggressively and are smart about fights and moving around the map. Airdrops can also be help, but it's not a huge priority for solo unless you'd like to camp a lot, which is not really that great of an idea. The treasure map reveals resupply points, which can be good for aggressive players because you can push in on players and then restock, but be careful because enemies can loot your resupply point. But bounty tokens are typically used the most by pro players because once you kill your target, you can get some pretty high loot items. However, if you don't actually kill your target, then, uh, well, they're, it's just wasted. So you gotta be prepared for some aggressive play, okay? For the basic section of your loadout, the starting armor can help you if you plan on dropping and fighting 
fighting like right off the bat. Supply crates can help with early fights as well since it gives medkits and ammo. Leg pockets give 30 additional carrying capacity, which can be helpful if you like to pick up a lot of stuff and stock up on your ammo. Then you have scanners, which feels like the worst for solos, but it can actually be pretty useful in duos and squads because it shows where people are landing and how many people are still on the plane. Personally, I prefer going with a starting armor just in case I don't find anything early on, but that's my personal preference. My next tip is to use the ghillie suit, which you can find in airdrops. These make it so the enemies can't auto lock onto you, which is a big advantage in free fire. These last for a certain amount of damage, but they don't actually take damage for you, so they don't act like armor. It's just like that's how long the ghillie suit lasts for, so keep that in mind. Next tip, always check your vending machines. As you go around looting, killing people, and stuff like that, you'll pick up free fire coins, and it is always worth it for you to check those vending machines, whether you have coins or not. Yes, you can get ammo, special weapons, glue walls, better equipment for your coins, but some vending machines have things at discounted prices, including items completely for free, like a spare glue wall or a med pack or something like that, okay? Now, when playing duos and squads, you'll also be able to buy revival cards from these vending machines, which can be used to bring your teammates back into the match even after they've been killed. Now, they will respawn without having any gear, so it's a good idea to, like, drop an item out of your inventory so that they can, like, at least start out with a weapon. But having them come back to a match to fight with you is much better than having to fight alone. Another way that you can bring teammates back is with respawn points. All you have to do is stay inside the respawn point long enough and all of your fallen teammates will come back to fight with you. It doesn't matter if you're in squads and you're the last person alive, they'll all come back, which is awesome. However, it does come with some drawbacks. It takes a long time to activate. You have to go inside that section and camp around there and hang out for a really long time before they'll come back. And the trickiest part is that other teams will be able to see that respawn points are in use. So you gotta be prepared for a fight and set up some glue walls to give yourself some cover, okay? Additionally, once they come back, you're gonna wanna be able to uh, get them some loot as well because uh, it'd be unfortunate if they died right after you respawn them. My final battle royale tip is to make sure you always have some EP. EP is the bar above your health bar. And when you're missing HP, one EP will convert to one HP every second, which means that you can like slowly heal up over a long period of time. And it can't always make it so you survive a, like a, a crossfire fight with somebody, but there are times when it is the reason why you stay alive. EP can be gained in three ways in battle royale. You can find mushrooms on the ground, which you should always pick up if, if you have the opportunity to do that. Inhalers also give you some EP, but they have the added perk of healing you and being able to use them while you're moving, which is a really nice feature. You can also gain EP from a bonfire if you have one, and uh, there might actually be other ways to get EP, but those are the three that I'm aware of. Now let's cover eight tips for class squad, and then we'll cover some tips for lone wolf. My first tip is to stay in groups of two or four most of the time. It's almost always better to have somebody with you because if you go down from behind, the other person has a chance to turn around and get you back up after taking out the enemy. Additionally, you'll be more likely to be able to outnumber enemies, which means that you can take turns putting pressure on the enemy while also taking turns reloading. Now, there is the option of splitting into a group of three and a group of one, but that's a little bit more tricky to use, and I don't recommend doing it unless you're in voice chat. However, if you are in voice chat, doing that is, is actually a pretty good idea because it allows you to communicate where the enemy is and then flank them. But most of the time, sticking together is a better option. My second tip is how to manage your money between rounds. It's typically best to just focus on getting one good gun rather than two mediocre guns or even two good guns, okay? This way, you can always focus on buying better armor and at least one mushroom, glue walls, grenades, and pretty much everything you're gonna need for any situation. Yes, it is nice to have two really nice guns so that you can, like, swap between long-range and close-range stuff, but having that utility of the glue walls and everything else is really important in Clash Squad, and you don't want to waste your resources on multiple guns. My third tip is to actually use the resources that you bought. I see a lot of players, definitely not me, but a lot of players will get knocked out before before they can even use their glue walls or grenades. And if you die before the round is over, that's a waste of resources. So don't feel like you have to hang on to everything that's useful for like the perfect opportunity, okay? If it's useful, it's better to use it than to just risk losing it. Tip number four, that tip that you guys love to hear, go for headshots. I mean, this is pretty obvious, right? Hitting red is way better than not getting headshots. But if you're good with headshots, you can get the M500 and the Desert Eagle very early on. And those are not, not only those are gonna be like pretty cheap and pretty good for you to save your resources, but they are by far the best guns early round if you can get headshots in. Although 
doing so is easier said than done. But if you do it successfully, you're gonna have more resources for later rounds, which means that you're gonna have better weapons than the enemy team. Tip number five, share that wealth, especially in rounds where your team wins. If a player dies in a round, then they lose all their gear and they have to rebuy it each time. But if players survive between rounds, they get to keep their gear. This means that a surviving player can help their team a lot by buying items for their teammates who died. Players can even request items in the shop, which makes it really easy for the teammates to actually buy stuff for them. But you can also just drag stuff out from your inventory and put gear onto the ground that you don't need. And as they walk over, they can then pick it up. Sharing your resources like this not only means that your team is going to be more geared up every single round, but that's going to lead to more victories, which means that you're going to have plenty of cash to spend in future rounds. Another solid tip is to use the in-game quick chat. This is especially important when playing the solo queue. Even just using enemy spotted is really helpful to your teammates if you get knocked down and the enemy is still visible. This does take a little bit of practice to get used to, especially if you're still like picking up the game and stuff like that, but it does take some time to learn which quick chat options are an option because an informed team is much better than a non-informed team. Go figure. Next tip is it's important to know when to hit fire or scope in on your enemies. Typically SMGs are better to hit fire with, but it's also usually a good idea to scope in on enemies in longer ranges, right? But if you are in a close range fight, it is not a good idea to scope in. Don't get into the habit of always scoping in because it is much harder to flick up for headshots. A good rule of thumb is to scope in on enemies that are further from 10 meters away. Otherwise, you're probably better off firing from the hip. My last tip for Clash Squad is to remember to switch your character and pet abilities. Some abilities are completely useless in Clash Squad, like the Falcon, right? So you want to make sure you're swapping back and forth between different abilities every single time you switch swap game modes. A lot of top players like to play Wukong in Clash Squad because every kill recharges the active ability immediately, and that bush prevents enemies from auto-locking onto you, which is really great. That makes it really easy for you to move around the map safely and also win some 2v1 situations and can even help you win some 2v1 situations against enemies that really suck at like actually aiming because they they really rely on auto fire and finally we got three quick tips for lone wolf number one don't take lone wolf too seriously <laughs> lone wolf doesn't have a ranked mode which means that it doesn't really matter whether you win or lose this makes it the perfect place to practice headshots figure out how you like every weapon and mastering the wonderful art of glue wall placement or maybe not even just placement, but just being able to place glue walls down fast. <laughs> Tip number two, if you're playing with Lone Wolf seriously and you want to dominate 1v1, pick your best weapons. Every two rounds, you alternate which guns you play with. Some rounds, you will get to pick which guns both you and your opponent plays, and other rounds, they will pick for you. This is a great way to get used to new gun skins, or maybe even an Evo weapon, and that's going to give you obviously a pretty good advantage. Or maybe you don't have any really strong skins or Evo weapons. In that case, pick the guns that you know the best and get a little bit more practice using them. In my opinion, it's better to master at least one or two guns than it is to just like be just equally sucky with all of them. As far as your abilities you bring into Lone Wolf, it depends on your goal. Lone Wolf is really great for testing abilities and like different builds that you can use for other game modes, but you can definitely go into Lone Wolf with abilities specifically to help you win more in Lone Wolf. I just wouldn't recommend upgrading characters specifically or like pets specifically for Lone Wolf since it's not competitive. Now there are other game modes in the game, like right now we got temporarily like zombie invasion, which is pretty cool. But today's video is about covering tips for the permanent ones. Make sure you subscribe for some more tips and also check out my other videos right over here. It's all it's all over here. <laughs> also, drop a comment in the section below letting me know any tips that you have for any of these game modes. Appreciate your guys' support. For now, this is Kairos Time ticking by and we will see you in Free Fire.